Hi, this is Larry Pettit with Carillon Financials Corporation. Carillon, since the very beginning, has done a pretty good job of keeping track of the date created for each record, the date last modified for each record, and the last maintained by for each record. But clients have wanted for a long time to be able to see all of the changes and who made the changes to things like sales orders and price files and customers and, and vendors and whatever in the system. So we've taken advantage of some new technology that's come available in the database arena and we've created a new menu option on the Carillon menu that's called temporal data. And I'm going to demo that to you here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our order entry window and I'm going to go ahead and create a quick new sales order. This isn't to demo the order entry window, but it's just so you understand the sequence of changes that I'll be making and how they'll show up in the temporal data. So here's our order entry window. I'm just going to bypass the pop-ups and go ahead and type in some data that I happen to know. This customer is a deadbeat and they've got bad credit, but it's going to go ahead and let us save an unapproved order without any uh, special, uh, without any special interference from a market or from a credit manager. So Betty's going to buy a bell. Okay, I'm supposed to also try to sell a horn, but we're going to bypass that. And notice that. Uh, uh, my quantity defaulted for me to one and the price came in from the price file at $3.99. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. So Betty's buying one bell at $3.99. Okay, and my update was successful. My order number is 101881. Well, as soon as I get off the phone with her, she's going to call back and say, hey, I want to uh, go ahead and buy change that order to be two bells instead of one bell. So I'm going to come down to my line items and go ahead and change my quantity order to be two. Notice that she's getting a quantity price break if she buys two. My unit price dropped down to 379 and she says, oh by the way I want to go ahead and add a bike uh, to my order. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new line item and add a bike. Okay, it's going to default to a quantity of one because that's the way I have my parameter set up to do things and it brought in a price from the price file of $123.94. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Okay, and still order number 101881. So now if I go up to my temporal data and I go over to uh, transaction and go to sales order history and I type in order number 101881. First thing it's going to do is show me a log of all of the changes that have been made to that order. So the was originally put in at 240.47 uh, uh, on March 30th and it was changed at 241 and here's the user who changed it. But now I've got a set of tabs, so if I want to go take a, I'm going to start down at the line items. If I go ahead and take a look at the line items, well, sure enough, the bell changed, the unit price changed from 399 to 379. Quantity order changed from one to two. The quantity remaining changed from one to two. The date last modified changed. The extended price changed. Okay, the pricing quantity and commission amount even changed. And then you're going to see there's two fields that you may not be familiar with in the Carillon world, and that's a sys start time and a sys end time. These are fields uh, that SQL Server is giving us access to. They're actually in UTC time, which you can think of as London time. I believe that's five hours ahead of uh, where we are in Dallas. But uh, it'll actually keep track of the UTC time of those changes and how long is this change valid for. So this last change to the bell is good till the end of time. I'm sure I won't be around in the year 9999. Uh, notice it also will show you the difference in the tax rows that have been changed and it even shows a new row of the bike being added down here and when it was added. Okay, I don't have any art on this order. I do have components for the bike so I'm going to come back and see the components for the bike. I didn't make any changes to the components if, uh, if there had been any changes to the components, they would go ahead and show here and be highlighted. Likewise, it shows the operations, which are tasks done in Work Center, 
I didn't change any of the default operations for building this bike. I can take a look at the tax rows and see what was done there. Now, these, uh, for example, these tax rows, it's not showing any columns that didn't change, except for these first three, so you can tell what's going on. And that's doing that on all these. There's lots and lots of columns on these tables, but it automatically is, is making the columns that didn't change not visible, so you can focus on the changes in this particular application. And then finally, I can come up to the header up here, and I can say, even my header changed. So even though I didn't type anything up in the header, the gross margin for the header changed, and the date last modified changed. Salespeople didn't change, but if the salespeople had changed, I'd see that. If there had been any quick tag images associated with this order that changed, I would see those up there. So this temporal data window showing the sales order history shows you in detail, field by field, row by row in the table, everything that changed and highlights the changes for you. So if you're trying to figure out who changed a uh, who changed the price on an order, who changed the quantity on an order, who changed the item ID on an order, with the combination of the log up front that gives you the time and date that it was done, and the temporal data, the time that's uh, on the back data windows, or the back windows here, it'll, you'll be able to figure out who made what changes, when, and what changed. So that ends my demo of uh, temporal data. If it's something that you would be interested in adding onto your Carillon system, please don't hesitate to give us a call.